What is up, guys? Welcome to the Being Beautifully Honest podcast and channel. Thanks for being here, being subbed. If you're not, hit the button. And if you're listening on YouTube, hit the like. It's like walking in the room and hitting that light switch. Let's brighten up the place and get into the politics and BS. I was so proud. Let me tell you, I was so proud of Michelle and Barack, to be honest with you, from their DNC speeches because for many years, and I I, I I get it, they would not really say names because they were trying to take the high road. You remember Michelle Obama's famous line, when they go low, we go high. But when it comes to this MAGA crew and Donald Trump, they are in the gutter. So because they're so low, you have to get low with them. And I am so proud that they have been putting the names on it and they've going, they're going like for the jugular directly to Donald Trump, the MAGA crew, and they're not taking no shorts. They're just like, yeah, I'm going to put a name on it. And I was so proud of that because I really wasn't expecting that because they really didn't have to. They didn't have to because we already know who the opponent is. So you could just speak about the person and not say the name. You could say, you know, he sh who shall not be named or whatever. You know, they didn't have to put a name, but I love the fact that she put the names on it. So I wanted to just go ahead and play her speech. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys so that we can just pinpoint some areas that I just thought was spot on. And the whole speech was great, honestly. So there's that. But let's just go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to share my screen. All right. Big night ahead. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Chicago. wonderfully magical is in the air, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're feeling it here in this arena, but it's spreading all across this country. We love a familiar feeling that's been buried too deep for far too long. You know what I'm talking about. It's the contagious power of hope. The anticipation, the energy, the exhilaration of once again being on the cusp of a brighter day. The chance to vanquish the demons of fear, division, and hate that have consumed us and continue pursuing the unfinished promise of this great nation. The dream that our parents and grandparents fought and died and sacrificed for. America, hope is making a comeback. <laughs> yeah. But to be honest, I am realizing that until recently, 
I have mourned the dimming of that hope. And maybe you've experienced the same feelings, that deep pit in my stomach, a palpable sense of dread about the future. And for me, that mourning has also been mixed with my own personal grief. The last time I was here in my hometown was to memorialize my mother, the woman who showed me the meaning of hard work and humility and decency, the woman who set my moral compass high and showed me the power of my own voice. Folks, I still feel her loss so profoundly. I wasn't even sure if I'd be steady enough to stand before you tonight, but my heart compelled me to be here because of the sense I, of duty that I feel to honor her memory and, and, to, and to remind us all not to squander the sacrifices our elders made to give us a better future. You see, my mom, in her steady, quiet way, lived out that striving sense of hope every single day of her life. She believed that all children, all, all people have value, that anyone can succeed if given the opportunity. She and my father didn't aspire to be wealthy. In fact, they were suspicious of folks who took more than they needed. They understood that it wasn't enough for their kids to thrive if everyone else around us was drowning. So my mother volunteered at the local school. She, she always looked out for the other kids on the block. She was glad to do the thankless, unglamorous work that for generations has strengthened the fabric of this nation. The belief that if you do unto others, if you love thy neighbor, if you work and scrape and sacrifice, it will pay off. If not for you, then maybe for your children or your grandchildren. You see, those values have been passed on through family farms and factory towns, through tree-lined streets and crowded tenements, through prayer groups and National Guard units and social studies classrooms. Those were the values my mother poured into me until her very last breath. Kamala Harris and I built our lives on those same foundational values. Even though our mothers grew up an ocean apart, they shared the same belief in the promise of this country. That's why her mother moved here from India at 19. It's why she taught Kamala about justice, about the obligation to lift others up, about our responsibility to give more than we take. And I'm gonna pause it right there for a moment. And it's so true what she's saying about hope making a comeback because Let's be honest, even though I was like, listen, I don't care if Joe Biden is on life support, I'm voting for him over Donald Trump, but it was feeling hopeless. It was feeling like, and, and that's why Donald Trump is out here going nuts right now, even though he already was crazy, but that's why he's out here going nuts right now. It, it's because in comparison, he was looking better to a lot of people than Joe Biden was. And he knows that comparing him to Kamala, he looks like he's ready to be picked up by the garbage truck, dumped into it, and put into a landfill. Seriously. She'd often tell her daughter, don't sit around and complain about things, do something. So with that voice, in her head, Kamala went out and she worked hard in school, graduating from an HBCU, 
earning her law degree at a state school. And then she went on to work for the people, fighting to hold lawbreakers accountable, strengthening the rule of law, fighting to get folks better wages, cheaper prescription drugs, a good education, decent health care, child care, elder care. From a middle class household, Kamala worked her way up to become vice president of the United States of America. My girl, Kamala Harris is more than ready for this moment. She is one of the most qualified people ever to seek the office of the presidency. There is nothing like a Wendy's Frosty. It's cool. It's creamy. It's only a dollar right now. Wait, what? The one and only Frosty is a buck? Gotta be Wendy's. And she is one of the most dignified. A tribute to her mother, to my mother, and to your mother too. The embodiment of the stories we tell ourselves about this country. Her story is your story. It's my story. It's the story of the vast majority of Americans trying to build a better life. Look, Kamala knows, like we do, that regardless of where you come from, what you look like, who you love, how you worship, or what's in your bank account, we all deserve the opportunity to build a decent life. All of our contributions deserve to be accepted and valued. because no one has a monopoly on what it means to be an American. No one. That statement right there is so powerful to me because when you listen to all of this stuff about Project 2025 and the bullshit that comes out of Donald Trump's mouth and the people that are connected to him, they truly feel that they have a monopoly over what is to be an American and who should be in charge and running everything and ruling everyone. And it's like, this God complex has to go. And, and a lot of these people, they claim to be Christians and they are so far from it, so far from it. Kamala, has shown her allegiance to this nation, not by spewing anger and bitterness, but by living a life of service and always pushing the doors of opportunity open to others. She understands that most of us will never be afforded the grace of failing forward. We will never benefit from the affirmative action of generational wealth. If we bankrupt the business, if we bankrupt the business or choke in a crisis, we don't get a second, third, or fourth chance. Thank you. Like, li listen up. All this man, the, the people who claim that he is a successful businessman, it, it, the track record does not line up. He has been propped up, but he has not been successful in business. He has bankrupted all of his businesses. What regular person do you know can file for bankruptcy and even get a loan? But they have continued to prop him up. And when she said to choke in a crisis, 100% the C word pandemic, right? And then people want to give him another shot to be president again. It's crazy. If things don't go our way, we don't have the luxury of whining or cheating others to get further ahead, no. We don't get to change the rules so we always win. If we see a mountain in front of us, we don't expect there to be an escalator waiting to take us to the top. No. We put our heads down. We get to work in America we do something. 
and throughout her entire life. That's what we've seen from Kamala Harris. The steel of her spine, the steadiness of her upbringing, the honesty of her example, and yes, the joy of her laughter and her light. It couldn't be more obvious. Of the two major candidates in this race, only Kamala Harris truly understands the unseen labor and unwavering commitment that has always made America great. I love that. Like, throw the making America great in his face. And, and him talking about her laughing, that's the laugh of a crazy person. <laughs> I would rather hear her laughing over seeing his funky file face and facial expressions all of the time. Trust and believe that. But him and his doom and gloom reporting of what's going on in this country and this country is going to hell. Like, no, seriously, you go to hell. Now, un unfortunately, we know what comes next. We know folks are gonna do everything they can to distort her truth. My husband and I sadly know a little something about this. For years, Donald Trump did everything in his power to try to make people fear us. She put a name on it. When she said that at that moment, I was like, yes. She said the full name. She didn't say the former president. She didn't say 45. She didn't even say the, the, the big orange piece of shit, which she could have said, but she said the name. And I absolutely love that. And he started this years before he decided to have this big marketing scheme and running for president in 2015, because that's what it was the first time around. It wasn't about actually becoming president. Do you know how many people have run for president because it was going to be something that was going to be beneficial for their business and their resume? And they knew that they didn't have a snowball chance of actually becoming president. And that's what that was for him. I don't know why people can't get that through their thick skulls, but that's exactly what it was the first time. I've already done some commentary talking about that. You can go back and listen to that. But uh, I'm glad that she put a name on it. See, his, his limited, narrow view of the world made him feel threatened by the existence of two hardworking, highly educated, successful people who happen to be Black. tell him that the job he's currently seeking might just be one of those black jobs. <laughs> Look. It's his same old con. It's his same old con doubling down on ugly, misogynistic, racist lies as a substitute for real ideas and solutions that will actually make people's lives better. Ugly, misogynist, racist lies. Thank you. Look, because cutting our health care, taking away our freedom to control our bodies, the freedom to become a mother through IVF like I did, those things are not going to improve the health outcomes of our wives, mothers, and daughters. Shutting down the Department of Education, banning our books, none of that will prepare our kids for the future. Demonizing our children for being who they are and loving who they love, look, that doesn't make anybody's life better. 
instead, instead, it only makes us small. And let me tell you this, going small is never the answer. Going small is the opposite of what we teach our kids. Going small is petty, it's unhealthy, and quite frankly, it's unpresidential. So, why would any of us accept this from anyone seeking our highest office? Why would we normalize that type of backward leadership? Doing so only demeans and cheapens our politics. It only serves to further discourage good, big-hearted people from wanting to get involved at all. America, our parents taught us better than that, and we deserve so much better than that. Hey, it must be your lucky day. We have a free upgrade. We must do everything in our power to elect two of those good, big-hearted people. There is no other choice than Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. No other choice. But as we embrace this renewed sense of hope, let us not forget the despair we have felt. Let us not forget what we are up against. Yes, Kamala and Tim are doing great now. We're loving it, they're packing arenas across the country. Folks are energized, we are feeling good. But remember there are still so many people who are desperate for a different outcome who are ready to question and criticize every move Kamala makes, who are eager to spread those lies, who don't want to vote for a woman, who will continue to prioritize building their wealth over ensuring that everyone has enough. So no matter how good we feel tonight or tomorrow or the next day, this is going to be an uphill battle. So folks, we cannot be our own worst enemies. No. See, because the minute something goes wrong, the minute a lie takes hold, folks, we cannot start wringing our hands. We cannot get a Goldilocks complex about whether everything is just right. And we cannot indulge our anxieties about whether this country will elect someone like Kamala instead of doing everything we can to get someone like Kamala elected. <laughs> Kamala and Tim, they have lived amazing lives. And I, I am confident that they will lead with compassion inclusion and grace, but they are still only human. They are not perfect. And like all of us, they will make mistakes. But luckily y'all, this is not just on them. No, uh -uh. this is up to us, all of us, to be the solution that we seek. It's up to all of us to be the antidote to the darkness and division. Look, I don't care how you identify politically, whether you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, or none of the above, this is our time to stand up for what we know in our hearts is right. <laughs> and that's why I'm doing it, because that's who I am. I don't identify with any of these parties, not even the independents. So I'm in that none of the above category that she just mentioned. To stand up, not just for our basic freedoms, but for decency and humanity, for basic respect, dignity, and empathy, for the values at the very foundation of this democracy, 
It's up to us to remember what Kamala's mother told her. Don't just sit around and complain, do something. So if they lie about her and they will, we've got to do something. If we see a bad poll and we will, we got to put down that phone and do something. If we start feeling tired, if we start feeling that dread creeping back in, we got to pick ourselves up, throw water on our face and what? We only have two and a half months, y'all, to get this done. Only 11 weeks to make sure every single person we know is registered and has a voting plan. So we cannot afford for anyone, anyone, anyone America to sit on their hands and wait to be cold. Don't complain if no one from the campaign has specifically reached out to you to ask you for your support. There is simply no time for that kind of foolishness. You know what you need to do. So, consider this to be your official ask. Michelle Obama is asking you, no, I'm telling y'all to do something. <laughs> election is going to be close. In some states, just a handful, listen to me, a handful of votes in every precinct could decide the winner. So we need to vote in numbers that erase any doubt. We need to overwhelm any effort to suppress us. Our fate is in our hands. In 77 days, we have the power to turn our country away from the fear, division, and smallness of the past. We have the power to marry our hope with our action. We have the power to pay forward the love, sweat, and sacrifice of our mothers and fathers and all those who came before us. We did it before y'all and we sure can do it again. Let us work like our lives depend on it. And let us keep moving our country forward and go higher, yes, always higher than we've ever gone before as we elect the next president and vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris and Tim Walz. Thank you all, God bless. All right, guys, so listen. <laughs> Like I said, I was just so happy to hear that she put a name on it. Like, yeah, say his name. He has been doing his best to try to terrorize the Obamas for years while they were in office, questioning where he was born. The birther term actually was birthed, if you will, out of Donald Trump and his accusations about Barack Obama not even really being born in the United States, so he's not a legitimate president. It's just, they're so disgusting, the Trumps, all of them, but the, the, the grand, the grandest, grand wizard, <laughs> Donald Trump, I'm, I'm glad that they're putting his name on it and they're calling him out. So guys, let me know your thoughts on Michelle Obama's speech what she had to say, what she lined out. And I love the fact that she talked about having a voting plan in place. So make sure you have your voting plan. So like I've said, make sure that you are registered. If you're not registered, go ahead and do it. If you are registered, make sure that they have not purged you from the voter rolls in your county and find out when early voting is and just vote early. Don't wait until election day. So guys, thanks for being here, liking and subscribing. I'm Beth, just being beautifully honest. So until next time, I wanted to keep it brief, beautiful, and I'm going to say bye.